Well today we're going to talk about what you can do in summer to stay safe around water, particularly if you've got young children and how you can keep them safe. So the first thing to think about is when you go to the pool. Uh, obviously in the UK most of the swimming pools have a lifeguard in and that's great. But it's important to remember that those lifeguards are watching lots and lots of people at the same time. Whilst you might only have one or two children with you, so even at a lifeguarded swimming pool, which is by far the safest place to swim, it's important that you keep your children under constant supervision. Whilst thinking about swimming pools, uh, it's worth thinking about the swimming pools you might come across on holiday, either in the UK or abroad, at holiday parks. Because they often don't provide lifeguards, and if they do, particularly abroad, the lifeguards might not be qualified to the same standards as they are in the UK. So the same rules apply, keep your children under constant supervision and make sure they stay in, in water, the shallow water that is safe for them to swim in. Around the home you might put paddling pools and other water features out during the summer and they're great fun and a great way to cool off and a great experience for young children. But it's really important that after you've finished using that equipment that it's drained or put away so children can't wander back and fall in when your back's turned. Each summer we see an increase in the number of people drowning in the UK. And that's partly due to people seeing water sites like this and wanting to get into the water to have a cool off. But it's really important that if you want to swim in open water through the summer that you head to supervised and lifeguarded water sites, whether they're lakes or reservoirs. But it's important to understand that rivers like this one have a lot of hidden hazards which you can't see and may not be aware of when you go into the water. So if you want to swim in a lake or open water this summer, the best thing to do is to go to a supervised or lifeguarded lake or to a lido or open air swimming pool where you can swim safely and know that if anything does go wrong, someone will be there to help you. Now, no matter how strong a swimmer you are, when you go into cold water, it has an effect on the body which is purely physical, so there's nothing you can do about it, and that is known as the cold shock response. When you go into cold water, the cold shock response causes you to gasp and hyperventilate, which is something most of us have experienced even going into a warm swimming pool, but that effect is much greater in cold water. And of course, at that time, it's really important that your airway is clear of the water so you don't gasp in uh, any water into your lungs. At the same time as that's happening, your muscles can start to cool, and that means they'll work less efficiently, and you may even struggle to coordinate your arms and legs into a swimming motion. So if you go into open water in the summer months, you should always aim to go to a water site which provides supervision or lifeguards. Stay close enough to the side so you can get out if you need help. Always go with friends or family who can help you if something goes wrong. And avoid going into deep water or very cold water where you might get yourselves into difficulty. So here we can see the effect of cold water on the hands and start to understand the effect it would have on the arms and legs if you were in ice cold water trying to remove some clothing or trying to, to escape. Just trying to grip onto the laces is difficult enough uh, and my fine motor control is, is almost gone. As my hands are out of the water I can feel a little bit of strength coming back but it's really difficult and something I would have finished already by now is quite a task. So there we go. So that is the effect of cold water on fine motor control in the hands and a, an example of the effect that that could have on gross motor control of your arms and legs. At the beach the lifeguards often put out beach flags to let you know where the safest zones on the beach are. So there is the red and yellow flag for the approved swimming area where the lifeguards will have made sure that there's no debris in the water and that you're safely away from any rip currents or other hazardous features. The black and white checkered flag is where you can do water sports like surfing and if you see a red flag that is an area where there is definitely hazards that the lifeguards want to keep you away from. It's also an area that lifeguards often won't lifeguard because they've asked you not to go into the water there so it's really important to avoid water in front of red flags and also if you see the orange windsock blowing out to sea. That can make it very difficult for you to return to the shore, especially if you have an inflatable. So keep an eye out for the flags when you go to the beach. Of 
quarry pools are one of the most hazardous water sites we have in the UK, largely due to their depth, meaning that even in the summer months, the water remains incredibly cold. So it is dangerous to swim in quarries, but even more so to jump and tombstone into them, because you may not be 100% sure of the water depth, there may be debris under the water, including industrial scrap, and the cold temperatures of the water can cause you to hyperventilate even when you are submerged, which can cause you to drown very quickly.